Hello, Transformers fans. I'm Matt Freights, and I am the host of Energon Entries, a Transformers Talk podcast. This is my first YouTube video, and you know what we're going to do? I'm going to give you my thoughts on Transformers 1. So let's get after it. Like I said, I want to review Transformers 1, the latest movie that has come out, and I think it's a fantastic movie, but I want to get into some of the thoughts. So if you're seeing me for the first time, you should check out Energon Entries wherever it is that you find your podcast because I do an audio version I have for a while. Right now, I'm reviewing Generation 1 episode by episode, but we're going to continue on that train. But right now, I want to do something a little bit different. One of the things about Transformers that is akin to a lot of other hobbies, a lot of other 80s nostalgia, is that people get very married to the idea of what used to be. And I think that if you look at Star Wars, Star Trek, Lord of the Rings, any of those things, what I think you're going to find is that people are so married to that, that whenever something new comes out, they're very, very critical of it. And I can understand that sentiment to a degree. But I think when it comes to Transformers, so much has changed in 40 years. And going back and watching all the episodes, episode by episode, I found myself realizing that I looked at it with rose colored glasses when I was a kid. And so now fast forward to 2024, nearly 2025 now, when you come out with something new with Transformers, I think that it has to be different than what was presented to us back in the 80s. And that was obviously just robots fighting each other, not a lot of consequences, not a lot of depth. It doesn't mean it was bad. I will always have a soft spot for the cartoon. It just means that it's lacking depth. So fast forward to this movie. I took my son to go see it. I took my nephew to go see it. They were very excited. My son is very much in a Transformers phase right now. And I had very low expectations because I wanted to go there and make sure my son had fun. But when it came to the movie, I just want to be entertained. Where I am now at 41 years old, that's all I want. I just want to be entertained. And overall, I was highly entertained by this movie. I thought it was fantastic. Obviously, it looks wonderful. I think the casting was excellent. The voices that they chose for all of the characters, I think actually made sense with how the characters were presented. It had its own look, but I think that it also stood on its own, which I think is very, very important. Now, one of the things at the core of this movie is really telling an origin story. And it's not just an origin story of Orion Pax, D16, who then become Optimus Prime and Megatron. In my opinion, you're almost telling an origin story of Cybertron. Now, throughout the cartoon, throughout the comics, throughout all the other shows, there hasn't really been, at least to my knowledge, definitive canon when it comes to Transformers. Like, I do not believe that there is this lineage of events that has taken place that people would consider canon. Maybe we're getting to that point with all the continuity that's happened over the last 10, 12 years or so. I just don't think that it's there yet. And so there are a lot of liberties that can be taken, but one thing that I have noticed is that when liberties are taken, they are done so very, very carefully. And I think that this movie kind of does that. We see what Cybertron is like before Optimus Prime and Megatron start the war. We see what Cybertron is like in the way that it's presented, almost as if a human society would be. There are levels to the Transformers and transformation cogs being the difference between the haves and the have-nots. In my opinion, throughout the G1 universe, for the most part, I think Cybertron has really lacked a story. We know that the Transformers are created by the Quintessons. We know that Cybertron has been through thousands of years of a war. By the time we get to G1, all the energy is sapped. But we really don't know all that much about it, despite how in season two, we get a little bit more of a glimpse of it. And I think that this movie does a great job of giving us a little bit more, stretching out that history. And I think that that history actually lends itself to if they went directly into the Generation 1 show, it actually would work. I like that there's political unrest. I like that there is a class system. It adds a little depth. It gives some character depth to all of these robots that are walking around and all of the explosions, all the fights and things that are happening. And I think that that is necessary today. I think that the audience needs something of stake. There needs to be stakes on what is happening. Substance, depth. It's a word that I continue to use because I think it's very important. A lot of people, if you're a purist, may complain about how the Quintessons were used. And obviously throughout the comic, throughout the show, they have different levels of involvement in Transformers. I like how they are used here. 
I like that they are the big bad, the number one enemy. And honestly, I think that it fits them a little bit better than being the creators of the Transformers. I mean, obviously that has a little bit of depth to it as well, but if you're gonna put them in here, I think that this was the perfect way to do so because they looked menacing, obviously they acted menacing, and I think they just kind of fit the bill. We didn't get a lot of backstory on them, but we got just enough. And I think that's okay because this should be about the robots in disguise. It should be about the Transformers, not about the Quintessons. And I think using the Quintessons as a vessel to tell all of the story, I think made a lot of sense. Sure, it does in a lot of ways retcon some of the past that we've seen. But again, this lack of true canon, at least as far as I'm concerned, allows them to take these liberties. And I think that in this particular fashion, they were careful enough and the way that it was done was done really well and it worked. Something we always hear with Transformers is the story of the Primes. They obviously did that and they did it well here. I loved Lawrence Fishburne as Alpha Trion. I think it was wonderful. I love that there was strife between the Primes because with any type of God or any type of deity, I think we just assume that they are omniscient. We assume that they're infallible. And in this case, we found out they really weren't infallible. They were just elevated to this position that allowed them to be who they are, but they weren't perfect. And I like that it feeds into the Transformers are not perfect because they were created from imperfect beings and they themselves are imperfect beings. But I thought it was all very, very well done. And also throughout the entirety of it, when it comes to just Cybertron in general, before anything was ever revealed, before the end of the movie, I loved from a G1 perspective that you could see certain Autobots and you just knew, you knew who they were. Oh, that's Hound, that's Ratchet, that's Prowl, whatever. And at the end of the movie, they kind of brought all of that together when they got their cogs back. I really, really enjoyed that. But I think the main crux of this movie is obviously the relationship between, in the movie, Orion Pax and D-16. I think that this is a really good origin story for the both of them. Obviously, it plays up on things that have been talked about in the comics. I think they maybe have briefly mentioned it in some of the other iterations of Transformers. I think it was done extremely well here. I think that Megatron's journey from D16 to Megatron was very organic, very believable. Honestly, I think it was something that we can relate to. Looking up to Sentinel Prime the way that he did, worshiping him, believing him, and then finding out that it's all a lie. Honestly, I can understand that. He just chose to handle it a little bit differently, but you saw the signs, you saw as the movie went on, Everything that triggered something new, something darker, something deeper, all of it made sense. And by the time they get to the end, it brings you right around to the beginning with, I just do not want to take care of you anymore. And it's a theme that kind of kept creeping up, how D-16 kept getting in trouble because of Orion Pax. By the end, you recognize Megatron, you recognize this ruthless leader. And like I said, this iteration of Megatron could easily fit into anything that comes down the line. And I think we just saw a more softer side. And honestly, I think that the dichotomy between Orion Pax being the non-rule breaker and Megatron or D16 being the protocol follower. And then they end up flip-flopping in what we know in their traditional temperaments, their traditional roles. And I like that. I like it a lot. Again, depth to the character and everything about the D16 character was done so well, so believable. It was exceptional work. The other thing I really liked about it was you saw why the Decepticon symbol looked the way that it was and why Megatron ended up getting that name with one of the primes, Megatronus, having the head that looked like the Decepticon logo. A little bit too on the nose if you're kind of nitpicking, but ultimately, again, familiarity. And that brings us to Orion Pax. Orion Pax obviously was meant to be kind of like Hot Rod from the original movie. Now, that may be blasphemous, but Hot Rod in Transformers the movie from 1986 was just that. He was reckless, didn't follow protocol, was a leader in there somewhere. And that was Orion Pax in this movie. And we saw over the course of time organically start to believe in himself. But honestly, I think what really turned the tide was the fact that his friends believed in him and were pointing out, yes, you are flawed. You have many flaws. However, you have a hope. And that was Alita One saying that, and I really enjoyed that. Obviously, we saw the look with the red and the blue, and by the end of it, we saw the face guard, we saw the Energon Axe. Orion Pax to Optimus Prime, that glow up was amazing, in my opinion. 
And of course, the matrix of leadership, it was obviously very familiar and everything about that made sense and kind of made sense in line with what we've seen before in the show, in the movie. Optimus Prime had to be seen as worthy to get the matrix. Early on in the movie, I liked the little nugget that Orion Pack saved Jazz in the mine. And I think that it's obvious why he's so loyal to him. Again, this is continuity that I feel like the Generation 1 cartoon lacks a little bit, so this gives us a little bit of backstory, a little bit of depth. The other two characters in the movie, you had obviously B, who we know is Bumblebee. I think Keegan-Michael Key did a great job there. Obviously, was comic relief. Didn't really go too far, and he was serious when he needed to be. He was an ass kicker when he needed to be, but he was the comic relief, and that's okay. But they did give us enough to show signs that he could be a trusted general or a trusted commander in this new world that Optimus Prime is trying to build. Alita One, though, the only complaint that I have is I felt like she was very naggy, almost very cliched woman. Scarlett Johansson did fine. I think that she had a couple of really great lines. Obviously, the little monologue about hope that we talked about earlier, that was fantastic. And her line of you don't have the touch or the power was terrific. All of this was really well done, in my opinion. I think it was really well done. It's a great movie. I see, could see them having a second one, but I think that it did just enough to pay homage to the old source material, pay homage to what could be a great future with Transformers, and I just think it was pretty terrific overall. Let me know what you thought about it. Email me, mattyicemedia at gmail.com. And I just want to say to everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this finds everybody well and safe. And I will talk to you next time. This is Energon Entries.